Really, really fun day today. Um, get up in the morning, get a bunch of uh, guys finally their papers in, and then you get to go practice for the Rose Bowl. I don't think it gets much better than that. Some of these guys we've been uh, recruiting for probably over two years, and so it's always such a such a good day and um, exciting day for their families and exciting for us as we kind of move forward. 20 guys, um, I think we have seven on offense, um, 12 on defense. We have a kicker slash punter. And, um, you know, so we, we kind of like where we are. Could be a chance that we sign a, a guy or two more down the road. Um, you know, we're always recruiting 24 seven. And so we'll see, you know, with the second, um, you know, that second signing period, um, what the lay of the land is and kind of go from there. Got kids from five different states, <clears throat> which is really kind of how we do it. You know, that's our footprint. Um, we've expanded to more states in the past couple years, but it's somewhere between five and eight to nine states usually. And... Um, but we feel really good about the makeup. I mean, we do. I think our coaches did a wonderful job just sticking to the script and the process that we go about. I think the average GPA of this crew, now not all of them are graduated yet, but where we are, it's over 3-1. Um, we have more mid-year guys coming than we've certainly ever had. I think we have, we have um, I believe, eight coming in the winter. And we'll have possibly three more in the spring. And so that's a, that's a huge jump, and it's, uh, that's exciting to get these guys here this early. And it's also a credit to the kids that we have in this program right now to allow us to do that because you have to have the scholarships available to bring those guys in. And so that means a lot of kids are getting graduated either last summer or this fall. And so we're really proud of those guys doing that as well. So... Um, Really, really exciting crew. Can't wait to get them here. And uh, I have no doubt they'll make us better. Do you have a, a maximum in mind? You mentioned you might sign a couple guys in February. Do you have a number that you're looking at to get to? Or It's always a little bit fluid, that number. You know, everybody always looks at seniors, but it's never that easy. And, you know, our assistants want to recruit everybody that, you know, they see a guy they like. They don't pay attention to numbers. The head coach has to do that. It's like, slow down. <laughs> we're getting too, too tight here. So we're, we're kind of right around uh, close to the number we want to be at. And that's why I say there could be, you know, one or two or three more guys. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just see. Coach, heavy on um, offensive defensive line. Yeah. Not only on size, but just numbers. You talked about the script. Was that just the way things worked out? Or if I would have asked, you know, a year ago, would you have anticipated taking that many on offensive defensive line? I, I think we're right where we want to be with those guys. Um, first of all, they're really hard to find. Big guys. They're just hard to find. And when you found, you know, the eight big guys that we were liking that fit our profile, we are not holding back. Sometimes your numbers change depending on, you know, who you can get. And so we feel really good, um, you know, especially over the last – you know, two years in that D-line with what we have coming in now. So we got some some really good youth there. I like the depth of our O-line, and I, and I love it with the guys that we've, we're bringing in here. And so I don't think those guys, you know, that many guys, that's going to happen every year. It just doesn't. And it's such a physical position that you never know what happens, you know, down the road. When we went down to look at Alabama and Auburn, and you went and looked at the size of those lines, did that have anything to do, to do with you maybe emphasizing getting a little bit bigger? No, not at all. Um, that's not our thing. Every, I mean, everybody's like, this says the same thing. I want to get longer. I want to get fat. You know, it's like, yeah, no kidding. I mean, we just want good players. And if they happen to be really good size, awesome. But we're all about speed and movement. We're all about, like, what shows up on tape. Um, you know, we have some small guys on our defense right now that are flat-out football players. And that's always nice if that comes with it, but we will not take a guy just based on size. That's just not really our, you know, 
our our thing and these are really big guys but I think you put the tape on and you're like this is pretty impressive um, and I also think that the big guys are still a developmental position certainly in the offensive line you know those guys are still kind of growing into themselves and figuring out some technique things so you know with the athleticism that we brought in here I feel really good about that with those guys did you set out in this class to, to sign a kicker we you? did yeah and uh you know we're excited about tim we really are um I think he's got a really really big leg and um you know i think he's super passionate about kicking i think that's one thing that really showed up i mean this guy is a tremendous worker and competitor he's been over here he's in our camp and um you know all the research just being around him you can just tell he's really really focused on that how hard is that position to to evaluate you think it's not really hard because that's the one position that doesn't change when they get here but it seems to be hard <laughs> i mean really i mean the snaps the same the holds the same there's not the speed of the game doesn't change i guess it's the size of the stadiums that change that kind of make it more difficult on those things but um and I think there is, for whatever reason, an adjustment period for all these guys. And we've kind of experienced that over the course of time, kickers included. Um, but yeah. Is uh, Salma Palma a capable emergency kicker? <laughs> um, now that he's signed, no. <laughs> yeah, no. He, he is, Salma's, I mean, he is. I'm not sure how to describe him. Yeah, I mean, he is just, he's so interesting because he's so big and he's explosive. And you just wouldn't think somebody that size can move like that. And he's not only all those things, he's so young. He's 16 years old. He won't be 17 till later this month. And so, I mean, he's a really exciting player for us to get I mean we is you know as explosive as he is and all the great things he did for his high school we still think he has a a really big upside he has to kick potentially something. he's actually I think to to do everything and uh he probably could do it I don't know Morris, how comfortable you offering quarterbacks is off yeah. yeah 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 I always say this you know we, we're we take pride on um Sometimes not offering early. Um, I shouldn't say that. We take pride on not offering a bunch of scholarships and throwing them out there. You know, ours are, we're trying to make them mean something and guys that we've really researched and all that. Now, once we've done our research and been around guys, they might be young, you're always projected. You know, you're always thinking they have more to them in a developmental side. And... So we, we had a chance with Dylan being from the, the state. We were around him so much. Got a chance to see him play in live games, camp games, seven on seven, you know, all, all kinds of different stuff and watch so much football. And he's played for a long time that um, by the time we had offered him, we really felt like we'd seen him a lot. So we're excited to get him in here. And I think he's an awesome, um, awesome person. I think he's passionate about the game and and the ball comes out of his hand pretty good too. Only having three in-state recruits is the least amount you've had. In the yeah. Years. You know, it's the way the numbers work out sometimes, firing guys out swimming. And how do you evaluate that, you know, in terms of because you put a lot of emphasis on recruiting the state? Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, we always, I think everybody does, start in, your, start in your backyard, so to speak. And you just try to figure out who you think fits you and who can play here and, and, uh, who likes you, you know, all those type of things. And, you know, some years it's going to be eight guys and, you know, some years it'll be on the lower side like it was. And that's just kind of how it goes cyclical. And, um, but we're excited about those local guys for sure. How important was this, this last weekend for a guy like Laiatu Latu ends up committing? And yeah, signing? what's really awesome, um, that's our favorite weekend, these last two weekends, because we're not playing. And when we can get them here, and usually we'll have a significant number of, of uh, recruits 
on these last two weekends. And it's just awesome for those kids to be around each other and they can kind of start get the vibe. A lot of the kids are committed already and they've been up here. Um, it's just fun to be a part of that whole thing. And I think they get a true sense of what this program's all about. They get a sense of what the locker room's about and going to be about. And um, so we really like that time. I mean, that's a little bit of the problem with the early signing period. You know, we had some guys that came in early and it just felt like it was forever since we've seen them. And it feels like that sometimes when guys come up during the season, that it's like signing times now and it's been so long ago. Um, so these last two weekends are always important and they're they're fun to be a part of, really. Coach, there's got to be a story behind Corey Luciano. Um, and he played with Jay Keener at Eden High School. With yeah, and Peyton. Yeah. We don't take many JC guys. N no, we don't. Um, you know, we were just kind of looking at the numbers and rotation of graduation down the road and all those type of things. And... Um, and so we just, we just, um, you know, we looked at him and we really liked him on tape. He's one of those super athletic guys that could play, play multiple positions. And then we got to know him. And then what our two guys, you know, that are on our team really played with him and what they had to say. And just all the research checked out, like, this guy would be a really good fit in here. And um, so, yeah, I mean, sometimes we recruit junior college guys and, but it's not a lot, but when they fit us, um, it's awesome because he's, he's played another year um, at that next level. Do you feel suspense in these situations? You're not sure if a guy's going to come or not? Just kind of looking at the clock. Um, you know, I think about three or four years ago, or certainly when I first got here, I mean, I, I felt zero. Like the night before, two days, I'm like, I didn't even think about it twice and everybody else would be and I think as the recruiting situation has um, I'm trying to think of the right words gotten worse <laughs> um, it can be painful I mean the vultures and the, the low down tactics that is going on behind closed doors it's um, so now I think about it a little bit more than I did yeah. When it comes to signing day and maybe there's a, a guy who's having second thoughts or yeah. indecisive, what, what, what's your, your role in that? What's, what, what it just of? depends on the situation. Every situation's different and, um, you know, you just kind of go accordingly. How bad has it gotten worse? How bad do you think it's gotten? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. We just operate such a different way. So when it happens to the guys that have been committed, you know, to uh, like, why would you be calling those kids? They've been committed to us forever. And, but they do. And they're sending texts and they're doing all this stuff just to see if there's any slight chance. And if there is, look out. You know, and I think it's, I think it's hard. I mean, these are, these are kids and even the families that are going through this stuff for the first time. And, and, um, but it's the nature of the beast these days. Point where, you know, there's, there's the bad guys, the vultures and stuff. It's, it's turning otherwise good people into, into vultures themselves. It's just kind of counter it. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I sometimes just have a hard time figuring the whole thing out. It's just like I say, I mean, um, you know, if a kid's undecided and you're recruiting him down, you know, that's one thing. But guys that have been committed and, you know, why would this school be reaching out? You know, it's it just it's really um, just kind of makes me shake because I think it puts a lot of pressure on these kids that already have pressure on them anyways. And that's just not the way I think it should work. But you took five guys from Hawaii. Um, can you talk a little bit about Kaika Malloy? Yeah. And how he's received and looked at over yeah. there and uh, just... It just looked like he did a phenomenal job. Yeah, he did a phenomenal job. There's no question. Um, and I think I think why is because he's just such a great guy. And I think people feel that from him. And the more they get to know him, it's like, okay, this is a really good person that went to Washington, that is from the island, that can, I mean, those are all interesting parallels. You know, it's like he's been in their shoes. And so he can speak 
much different than the, the rest of us. That I mean, it's a direct, exactly that path. And I think he believes in this place strongly. And, and so I think you kind of couple all those things together. Um, it's, you know, it's a good formula. And we feel great about it, you know, because, I mean, I always say I want these kids to go where they fit the best. I tell every one of our kids that signed here and some kids that went elsewhere, like you should, this is about you. You should go where you fit the best. That's what this recruiting process is about. It's not about Washington or these other schools first and foremost, it's about the kids. And so, you know, we just like the proximity to Hawaii and we like the culture over there, fits well with the culture here and Seattle. And so it's a really, I think it's a really natural fit. And then you have a guy that can explain it to, to everybody over there because he's, he's uh, been there, done that. And it's, it's a pretty good combination. You make over to Hawaii and how are you on the six-hour well, plane flight? Yeah, I, I like it actually because I get a lot of things done. I mean, when I'm here, it's very hard for me to get anything done. So when I get on a plane and no one can get hold of me, I get a lot done. But I was, I, I'm not over there. I mean, I was over there um, in the summertime at a camp and then um, just back over there. One, the head coach can only go one time. So when you're going over there, you're going to make sure you get all your people seen in the, in the couple days you're over there. Yeah. How much, were, how much of a, did you go to the process when you hired uh, a guy to replace Coach Joe about bringing a Washington guy here? How much did that play a role into it? You know, it, re it really didn't. Um, I think it just worked out really, really nice. I, I always get that. Like, um, I'll have guys call me when a job opens like, I only want to be in Washington. I only want to be in Seattle. Or I'm from Seattle. You know, I'm like, that's not the guy that I'm, I'm looking for. The guy that goes, I will coach in Timbuktu. Like, this is what I do. And I'll do anything. to. Co that's the kind of mentality. Not like I only want to be here because like this is such, you know, I mean, it's like that's not really the. And so, you know, everybody, I mean, a lot of guys would like to come back to their alma mater, but it's like that's, that doesn't really mean a lot to me in terms of like we're trying to find the very best coaches in the country that are going to treat these kids a certain way. Like that is the most important thing to me. And then if he happened to go here too, okay, that's great. And then if he happens to be from his recruiting area, that's, and then so this thing's all kind of lined up like, um, you know, probably better than expected in terms of that because that wasn't the thought like, oh, he's from Washington, he's all that. Like we hired him because we thought he's a really, really good person that's a big time coach and he's passionate about like getting better all the time. And I think he has in the time that he's been here. Like I've seen so much growth out of, you know, him in so many different ways. That's been awesome. You've talked before about your philosophy just in terms of handing out offers and all that. Can you explain it again? Has that evolved at all since? I'm fired up again. We were bottom three. And so, and we don't even know, we really don't. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's bottom three or like whatever and, you know, on the lower end. I think it just goes to, and I will tell you, I mean, I think that hurts us sometimes in the recruiting process because you're getting your name out there when you throw things out earlier and you kind of see what sticks and do we really like this guy? Oh, we don't really like him. Let's move on from him. Let's just give him the cold shoulder. We found a better play. It's just that, that style works better. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, how we want to approach this thing, this way works better for us. So it's not a number we're trying to stick to. We just know that we're kind of slow to go. Like we analyze kids. Do you have interest in us? We have real interest in you. And we kind of go from there. And then if there's another player, if we're going to take another player at that position, we kind of go the same way. Maybe on how many 2020 kids you have offers up to? I don't, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I, I don't really ever know the number. Um, Somebody just told me yesterday that it was like, hey, congratulations, we're bottom three again. How about that? We're cheering to be bottom three in something. It's 24-7 job now recruiting, but how quickly before you turn the page? Obviously, you still have the rest of this class, but are you looking at 2020 and really diving into that? Absolutely. And 2021, and I just keep shaking my head going, really? Um, but it is, yeah. I mean, 
you know, I mean, that's just that's just how it is. And you just try to play the game, the recruiting game, you know, to the best that you can, doing it the right way and um, doing good homework. And, um, you know, if you're going to offer a young kid that's a 2021, you really feel like you've done your homework the best you can and you're going to you feel good about his development potential and all those type of things. Despite the recruiting vultures and all of that, there's got to be some joy in giving a kid an opportunity to fulfill his dream, whether it's, you know, the college level or maybe going up to them. There's got to be part of that. Oh, yeah. No question. I mean, I always say this is like a lot of a lot of jobs. I mean, when you get down to this point where you're recruiting these guys and you get one of these guys committed and then signed, I like that. I mean, it's not like we don't like the recruiting part of this thing. There's just so much legwork to get done to get to this part. Like when a kid fits you and fits your program and all the things you're all about, that, that's when it's really special. That's when you get excited going, I know this guy fits us. And sometimes we get on guys late. And Leautu was one of those guys. We didn't get on him late. He just got up here so late. He, we, we just didn't get him up here till, and we just kept knowing that he was a perfect fit for us. We had talked to his folks and we just loved everything. That, and you know, everything they said we were about, like what, what they were hoping for. And, and we just kept saying, we can't wait for you to get up here because we can describe it, we can talk about it, but you got to come up here and experience and you got to experience the players that are here and all those things. And so that's, you know, that's when it's fun when you feel like a guy really fits you and because um, you've done so much legwork and then, and then you're just trying to present who you are and see what they think. Coach, the process changed a lot even over the last three years. I think every year things evolved. Is there anything that evolved this year? I mean, seven on seven camps, just trainers, people involved. Yeah. Well, I'll go back to this again. Um, I have never watched a seven-on-seven seven game um, unless it was on our campus. So, now, I'm not, I'm not saying that's not good for those guys. You know, I think it's, some of those guys want to stay in football shape and do all those type of things, but, you know, we just, we just don't watch that. Um, and so... You know, that's been the same for the last handful of years. But, yeah, it seems like there's more people getting involved um, a little bit with these with these kids, trying to be involved with them other than their coach and maybe their parents. Um, Is that frustrating to have to deal with people outside of the parent and the recruit? Um, it's only frustrating if they don't truly have the best interest in the kid at at hand, like if this is somebody that's like really trying to do the right thing for this for this kid for whatever reason, like as a true mentor, then that's that's great, that's awesome. Um, that knows about the recruiting process, but you know you see it all in this whole thing. Dylan going to go play in Mexico City. What do you think of that? Do, do you know about that? The yeah. I think Cam, I think Cam Fab is um, is going to play in that one as well. Yeah, so we have a few guys um, playing. We have a bunch of guys playing in a lot of All Star games, and our stance always is, "Hey, if, you, if that's what you want to do, awesome, um, go do it." And um, could be a unique experience. And some guys are, you know, still even a little banged up from the season that might go to these games and not play for the experience. But I would expect all these guys that have signed with us, have multiple opportunities playing a couple, you know, multiple games. Do you wish there were more events or setups like that where it's more structured towards, you know, learning and, and education, not just about football camps and sort of hype and stuff like that in the recruiting process, you know, in terms of if we're going to add all this stuff, why don't we actually add some good to it? So, uh, the World Football uh, thing, they have like educational stuff involved with it, adding stuff like that with the recruiting process versus yeah. just hype and stuff like that. Do you think that's beneficial in terms of giving high school kids an opportunity to expand beyond football? While yeah. Going? Well, I think the education piece, I mean, we can't do enough of that for, for these young kids, however it's going to come. Um, but I think at the end of the day, these kids just want to get seen. You know, that's that's what they want to do. They just want to get exposed to us and, you know, the different coaches around. And they just kind of want to, you know, f at all levels. And um, and so with that, if you can educate them on the process of how this whole process goes and what's the best way to go about it. 
and what's you know important to pay attention to and what's not i mean we still we still struggle with that you know the parents well, they'll talk about well they saw this on the you know on the internet or recruiting stuff and we're like that has nothing to do with us we, we, <laughs> we can't say anything yeah half of its fans you know from whatever side and it might be a fan posing as a our fan and saying something bad you know it's like I mean, it's kind of the same conversations we have with our guys about, you know, the social. But it's tricky because they don't know. And you're trying to help educate them as you go through this process. And so I think education is always awesome. Do you expect uh, Jordan Lillahaya to be part of this class? Uh, not this one. Next one. So the 2020 season? Yes. Yeah. How deep are you guys into Rose Bowl prep at this point? Game planning. We're getting there. We're getting there. We've had some really good practices, though. I mean, we've got some really good hard work, paying attention to ourselves again. And we are uh, – there. there is – you know, we have been looking. We have been getting – you know, we've been – the coach has been gone for so much, and this rec this recruiting thing takes a little bit of time. Um, but so we're making progress on that. And I'm proud of how our guys have been practicing, and I think we've been getting some good work. Some of the guys that have played four games, the freshmen that have played four games, can see some time in the run bowl. That yeah, we don't really have a whole lot of, um, you know, we think the guys that have played four are we'll probably going to hold tight with that. Last time we talked to you, you, you had just learned that you were going to play Ohio State. Now that you've seen them, what are some things that stand out to you? Yeah, I think they're one of those next level teams. That's what stands out. Um, I remember watching them earlier in the season. I put a tape on because of someone that they had played and I was interested in looking at something. And it was, I think, their defense. And, and I was more interested in the other side of the ball, the offensive side of the ball, not really what they were doing to Ohio State. I just wanted to see that. And I remember Ohio State's defense catching my eye saying, okay, these guys, this is that next level uh, athlete. And so that's, that's what it is. I mean, they lose one game, you know, and like we always say, I mean, anything can happen on any given Saturday. Um, strong argument that they are one of the top four teams in the country. And I think if you watch their tapes, everybody would say that. So, you know, that's the good news, bad news, right? We get to play one of the, truly the best, one of the best teams in the country in one of the coolest bowl games that... Uh, has been around for a long, long time, and um, I think our guys are excited for the challenge. A lot of the chatter around them is on, on the offensive side because they've got all the athletes, but what were some of the things you noticed defensively that, that make them elite on that one? Well, it certainly starts with players always. And so, I mean, they got some guys that can run and explosive players. And then, um, you know, it's the same formula every, every time when you look at a team like this. You have these, like, elite players, and they're really well coached. You know, Greg Schiano and Alex Grinch, who was over at Washington. I mean, those guys, they're really, really good coaches. So you take really, really good players and with really uh, good coaches, and you get something that, you know, looks different on tape. And I think they've... You know, and then I was talking about their defense and their offense is one of the best in the country in terms of what they're doing. And they're creative and, um, um, yeah, really impressed with what they do, you know, on both sides. But even on offense, too, watching those guys, I think they're really, they do their stuff very well. It's really thought out and you can tell it's really well coached. Ohio State looks like a, a playoff caliber team. Seems like there's been more momentum recently toward maybe considering at least moving toward an eighteen playoff. Do you have any thought on that? Well, yeah. I mean, I think I think I think everybody's for that. I'm not sure who's against that, to tell you the truth. Larry said he likes it for. Okay. Very <laughs> fun. Um, now, when I say that, though, it's like I know it's easier said than done. Like that to me is the. I think that's the problem, like getting, like, how, how do we get this done? You know, because you start going, like, deeper into the season. These start to become more games for the kids. And, you know, every level does it but us. So, you know, you can do that. But I will say that when you're going into the, if you were going to go a 16-team playoff, which I know we're not there yet, um, I mean, that's a lot of mileage, you know, on this. And there's a lot of wear and tear. 
And um, so you'd have to, ba I just think you'd have to cut back off on some of the regular season games. And so, you know, then you take all the playoff money and you give it back to everybody else for not having as many games. But just the, the logistics of getting all that done, you know, I mean, I, I know it's not that easy to get done. This is two years in a row now where UCF has, you know, an amazing season and they don't get to be part of yeah. it. You were head coach of the yeah. program where kind of the same. I mean, do, do you think that a um, group of five should get more consideration for that sort of thing? I just think that, like, you expand it. Um, I think there's going to be, um, you know, teams that – are probably deserving by what they put on the field are going to be able to now have an opportunity. And I think that's exciting for everybody. You know, that's going to make it more, there's, it's going to be more popular. It's going to make college football more popular um, for teams like that. And, you know, teams like Ohio State that are right there. And I think that's what, you know, most everybody wants to see. Can you just tell me about Urban Meyer is going to be the last game at Ohio State, at least at Ohio State. What is, how much do you think that can play a role in terms of their side of things and overall your thoughts on him as a coach giving you guys pretty much yeah. close right yeah. Left. Um, yeah I, I was bummed to hear it for a couple different reasons one because I think he's one of the best in the game and you know I hope the whole thing is is okay um, and two I don't think Ohio State needs any more motivation like that send him out with a win or anything like that they got enough help on their sides um but yeah, I mean, I think Urban's record speaks for itself and what he's done in different places. And I mean, he's truly one of the, the better one, you know, one of the best that's, you know, been around, certainly in, a, in the time that I've been coaching. Coach, yesterday we had a chance to talk to a lot of the guys and they just seemed a little more happy, like they were having a little bit more fun. Is practice any different? They were also talking about Disneyland and going to Disneyland. You did with Disneyland? Is practice different? Or did practice is not much different. Um, it's really not that much different. And in fact, we've been going like pretty hard. We've kind of been looking at the, you know, the, the cycle of our, our, our bowl prep and trying to figure out how to tweak that and how to make it right in terms of, you know, where do we really spend all of our energy? Like, where are we going hard? Where do we back off them? All those type of things. So we've kind of been into a hard grind phase. I think they're happy that they're in a really good bowl game playing against a really good team, you know, and they, they know that um, it hasn't been easy and they've earned this opportunity. And, um, and I think any time Disneyland comes with it, that's icing on the cake. Um, if I have, it's been so long. I've been to Disney World, and so I, I don't think I have been to Disneyland. So I'm fired up too. Or is Kamari Pleasant closer to, to all being good. Able to go? I think they're I think they're we see them all in the game.